There's little doubt to anybody that the Blood Moon is going to play an important role in Tears of the Kingdom. It appears prominently in the new trailer, and while nobody knows the full extent of its role in the new game, fellow ZeldaTuber Hyrule Gamer theorizes that this new Blood Moon is the source of Ganondorf's renewed strength, and I think there's a lot of merit to this idea. I'd like to go one step further though. I have a feeling that Ganondorf's objective in Tears of the Kingdom is going to be to ensure that the Blood Moon can make him as powerful as possible. Perhaps unbeatably powerful. Now how could Ganondorf go about ensuring that? Well, let's think, what's the major weakness of the Blood Moon? As far as I can tell, its primary weakness is the fact that number one, it's a temporary thing. The Blood Moon in Breath of the Wild only occurs every once in a while. The vast majority of the time, it's a regular moon in the sky. No, not that one, that one. And of course, the second weakness of the Blood Moon is the fact that it can only be effective while the moon is out, during nighttime. If Ganondorf wants to gain untold amounts of power from the Blood Moon, he needs to solve those two problems. And I think in his quest to solve those two problems, we have a compelling possibility for the plot of the game. It's my thought that perhaps Ganondorf may be going for one of two goals, perhaps even both of them. The first is the idea that he may be trying to turn the regular moon into the blood moon permanently, so every nightfall he grows in power and his forces are rejuvenated. As for his second and more cataclysmic goal, what if Ganondorf is trying to destroy the sun? Maybe he's trying to bring an eternal darkness to Hyrule, so his blood moon is out at all times and his forces can be endlessly rejuvenated, allowing him to make quick work conquering the scattered kingdoms of Hyrule and then move on to the kingdoms that lay outside. Now I'll talk about why I think this could be a possibility, but I want to clarify a few things first. First things first, this is obviously just a theory. I hate that I even have to include this, but if I don't, there will inevitably be people eager to inform me that what I'm saying is just my own idea. Which I feel is implied, but some people just need it laid out, I guess. Not only that, but I'm not really a theorist. My channel primarily focuses on game lore and analysis, and occasionally recapping the theories of others. Full-fledged theory videos are far and few between for me, so I hope you'll offer me a little more grace than normal when it comes to judging my theory. Secondly, I just want to clarify that I have not read the leaks and my content is not informed by them. If you have read the leaks, please refrain from bringing them up. Let's make reading the leaks a choice for each person to make. So into the justification for my theory, I'm going to sort of take things in steps. First, I'm going to address the idea of making the moon into a permanent blood moon, and then since that is a mandatory step for getting rid of the sun and having a blood moon in the sky at all times, I'll address that secondly. Let's recap what we know of the blood moon in Breath of the Wild, and what we've seen of it in Tears of the Kingdom. In Breath of the Wild, the Blood Moon has a chance to occur anytime the moon arises, though it usually occurs every three hours of gameplay, and you're likely to see many of them before you roll credits. While mechanically, the Blood Moon is used to repopulate the land with slain enemies, as well as restock equipment, and do some finicky technical stuff related to system memory, we're interested in its lore purpose. Though we're never told in explicit words what the Blood Moon is, at least to my knowledge, we do know there is a direct tie between the Blood Moon and Ganon's power. The occurrence of the Blood Moon is said to happen when Ganon's power is waxing, and this can be visibly seen. Most of the time, Hyrule Castle is emitting malice, but otherwise fairly calm, but during the Blood Moon, Calamity Ganon himself can be seen spiraling in anger above the castle. When the Blood Moon rises in the sky and Ganon's strength is at its peak, he's once again able to spread his influence outside of the castle, and he does so by replenishing his forces, summoning new troops to replace the ones who have fallen. The Blood Moon seems to aid as a sort of power multiplier or enhancer for Ganon. The Blood Moon seems to enhance his power enough that even when he's being actively suppressed by Zelda, he's able to use it to influence the far corners of Hyrule. And we actually see the full power of the Blood Moon uninhibited during the Calamity. Unimpeded by Zelda's power, he's able to not just create swarms of soldiers, but also possess an entire legion of guardians as well as create Ganon Blights and corrupt the Divine Beasts. All in more or less one swift motion, such as the power of the Blood Moon. 
And this is of course merely the utilization by Calamity Ganon, who seems to be a facsimile of Ganondorf's true power. And I believe we see the true strength of Ganondorf with access to the Blood Moon in the trailers for Tears of the Kingdom. The first step we see is a repeat of what we've seen before, as Ganondorf once again creates an army of soldiers to do his bidding all across the land. Now that Ganondorf is in his true form, he's able to create powerful enemies the likes we've never seen before. In Hyrule Gamer's video, he talks about the idea that perhaps whereas the previous Blood Moon only enhanced Calamity Ganon, perhaps the new Blood Moon powers Ganondorf directly. I think there's something to this, particularly in regards to how the malice from the Blood Moon is the same color as Ganondorf's malice, whereas it did not match Calamity Ganon's purple malice. Ganondorf's malice being the same color as the moon likely means it is connected, and he may be able to draw strength directly from it, essentially Ganondorf's power uninhibited. I don't know whether the moon grants him power directly, or if it serves as a storage for his power that he can only access while it's in the sky, but it's quite obvious that the blood moon is allowing him to summon enemies of a greater variety and higher level of strength than was capable by Calamity Ganon. I think a further show of strength can be seen in how Ganondorf has seemingly ravaged the landscape of Hyrule and created natural disaster after natural disaster. Whether it's the lack of lava flowing from Death Mountain, trade it out for malice, or the storm seemingly active around Hebra, or the fact that the Deku tree is seemingly missing from the Lost Woods, it seems as though with a wave of his hand, Ganondorf has been able to bring untold destruction onto the lands of Hyrule, all from having access to the Blood Moon with his true form. Imagine the kind of destruction he could wreak if he was able to turn the moon permanently into a Blood Moon. It is blatantly obvious that this is not a Ganondorf interested in conquest rather completely dedicated to destruction, and permanently converting the moon into a blood moon would give him access to fresh troops every night, and if it does act as a power enhancer, Nightfall would spell doom as he advances his agenda every sunset. If Ganondorf was able to create a permanent blood moon, he would be infinitely harder to stop. And I think that this idea doesn't just make sense for Ganondorf, but it also seems to fit the theme of the game, as the big emphasis is now on leaving the grounds below and reaching towards the heavens, so it makes sense that the ultimate act of villainy is related to the thing that is always in the sky. What if the quest revolves around attempting to reseal Ganondorf before the moon is totally changed, totally corrupted? Perhaps in the past, Ganondorf succeeded in changing the moon, which made the ground world totally uninhabitable, and the flying islands exist as a method for the previous civilization, probably the Zonai, to lift people up off Earth and out of harm's way, similar to Skyloft. Maybe the moon-shaped buildings or structures we see relate to this and serve as methods of combating the change of the moon. Perhaps there's one moon-like structure for each natural disaster, and defeating the dungeon inside the moon, or however they have Link activate it, leads to that natural disaster being combated. So defeating one moon dungeon might rid Death Mountain of its malice and return its lava flow, and defeating another might return the Deku Tree, so on and so forth. So if we agree that it makes sense for Ganondorf to desire to turn the moon into a permanent blood moon, because having access to it every nightfall would bring him a lot of power, what would be the next step from this? To eviscerate the very sun from the sky, and cause the land of Hyrule to be beholden to a permanent night. No sun to contrast with the moon would of course mean that the moon would always be in the sky, and he would have constant access to it, and thus unfettered power. Every time a monster dies, he can immediately replace it with another. With every natural disaster he inflicts upon Hyrule that is solved by its denizens, he'd be able to create another one immediately. Not to mention the effects that having no sun would have on the people of Hyrule. I have doubts there would be much in the way of realistic consequences of the removal of the sun if it was to happen. I don't think they'd be living through this Kurzgestalt video. After all, Majora's Mask showed that the series is willing to play pretty fast and loose with physics and chemistry and the like, when Majora's Mask featured a moon within spitting distance and seemingly no major environmental changes. However, while I doubt those sort of changes would be conveyed, I think the lack of a sun would obviously impact the life of the Hylians in some pretty serious ways. 
Crops dying leading to starvation, dead plants leading to sparse wildlife. It would be a resource crisis on top of the threat offered by Ganondorf's army. I honestly don't think there would be any coming back from the death of the sun. I think at that point the golden goddesses would have to intervene again. So to me, it seems like the perfect plan for Ganondorf. I admit there isn't a tremendous amount of proof for either of these ideas, just a lot of things that seem to make sense. The seeming heavy emphasis on the moon, the way it seems much closer to the planet in this game, in this scene in particular, the way Ganondorf's malice matches the color of the moon now, the way we see the blood moon occur and give power to Ganondorf during the newest trailer, it all seems to match up with the idea of Ganondorf striving towards the perfect, eternal blood moon. But again, I know I don't have much in the way of proof, so this is definitely more of a potential scenario than a theory. And the further idea about deleting the sun is pure guesswork work, just something that I think would be rather cool. Still though, I can't shake the feeling that the plot is going to revolve around the Blood Moon. What do you think? Do you think I might be onto something? Do you think Ganondorf going after the sun is a bit too far of a stretch? At the very least, do you think the Blood Moon is likely to play a role in the story? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support me, you can do so by liking and commenting on the video, sharing it, come follow me on Twitter, or join my Discord. And if you'd like to join the Subrosian Parade, you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon. Stay safe out there, keep your eyes peeled for flying globs of malice that turn into horrifying bad guys, and bring a friend, because it's dangerous to go alone.